Okay, so we're going to be trying chapter eight, lesson one. This is, uh, well, chapter eight, lesson one from Jacob's Algebra. And this lesson is about scientific notation. So if we have a number written like 10 squared, that's supposed to be a 10, you know that that's gonna be 10 times 10. And you know that 10 times 10 is 100. Notice that our exponent on the 10 is the same as the number of zeros in our final answer. If we have 10 cubed, that's the same as 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. Again, our exponent on the 10 is the same as the number of zeros in our final answer. So what do you think we would have with 10 to the 15th? We would have a 1 followed by 15 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 10 to the 15th would be a 1 followed by 15 zeros, a very large number. So if you need to write a number in scientific notation, like for instance, you want to write the number 5,000, what you would do is first off write down the number that you're starting with, 5,000. And what we're going to do right now, the decimal is over here. For scientific notation, you need to start with a non-digit num with a non-zero number that is between zero and ten. So it's got to be greater than zero. It's got to be smaller than ten. So we're going to take our decimal and we're going to move it to right here. So 5,000 is equal to 5 times 10 to what power? Well, the power is however many places we have to move the decimal to get back to the number we started with. We started with 5,000. What do we have to multiply 5 by to get, a th to get 5,000? We've got to multiply it by 1,000. That's three zeros. So 5 times 10 to the third is 5,000. What if we had a number like 4,600, I'm sorry, 4,603,000? Right now, our decimal is over here. To convert this to scientific notation, we have to move that decimal to just after the first non-zero digit. So that means we're going to move it to here. So this is going to be equal to 4.603 times 10 to what power? Well, if the decimal is here, how many places are we going to have to move it to get back to the number we started with? Well, we've moved it to over here. We're going to have to move it one, two, three, four, five, six places to get back to where we started. So it's 4.603 times 10 to the sixth. So when we're doing scientific notation, converting a decimal to scientific notation or scientific notation to a decimal, what we're doing is moving our decimal place back and forth. And the power on the 10 tells us how many places we moved the decimal point. So let's start with the first set two problem. It says, write the name by which each of the following numbers is usually called. Well, instead of writing that out in words, I'm going to write it out in numbers. Um, so number 4a, we have 10 squared. And we know that when we have powers of 10, you write a 1 followed by however many zeros you have as your exponent. We have 2 as our exponent, so we put 2 zeros. So 10 squared is 100. What about b? Well, 4b is 10 to the third. So we write down a 1 followed by 3 zeros because it's 10 to the third power. Part c, we have 10 to the fourth. Because it's to the fourth power, that means we write one with one, two, three, four zeros after it. Uh, part D, we have 10 to the fifth. That is a one followed by one, two, three, four, five zeros. And then part E, we have 10 to the sixth. Again, that's a one and then one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. So whatever the exponent is on the 10, that's how many places we move the decimal. Okay, new page. So now let's look on number five. Number five A, 
Write the following numbers as a power of 10. Well, you've got a whole bunch of 10s multiplied by each other. When you count them up, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of them. So it, since there are 8 10s multiplied by each other, we have 10 to the 8th. Okay, part B, we have a 1 followed by two zeros and then three zeros and then three zeros and then three zeros. What is that? That is 10 to the 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. 10 to the 11th. Okay, part C, 1 million. Well, first write 1 million in decimal notation. 1, 1,000, and that one is 1 million. Now, to change that to uh, uh, power of 10, well, it's 10 to the 3, 6, 10 to the 6th power because it's a 1 followed by 6 zeros, so this has to be 10 to the 6th. Part D, 10,000. Well, first we write that out as a decimal number. There's 10,000. That's a 1 followed by 4 zeros, so that must be a 10 to the 4th power because there are 4 zeros. Okay, new problem. Let's look at number 6. Write each number, write the number that is 10 times as large as each of the following. So for part A, we have 3,400, and we want to write the number that's 10 times as large. That means we're going to multiply this by 10. When we multiply by 10, we just add another 0. So we have 3, 4, 0, 0, and then we put another 0 on it, so now it's 34,000. Part B, we have 5.72 times 10. That is 57.2. We don't just add another zero here because we aren't ending with our decimal point. What we're going to do is move our decimal to the right one place. That's actually what we did up here with uh, 3,400. We moved our decimal over one place, but since there wasn't anything there, we had to put a zero in that place as a placeholder. Okay, part C, we have 0 0.9 times 10. When we multiply by 10, again, that's moving our decimal over one place to the right, so that means we have 9. Part D, 0 0.0016 times 10. We're going to move our decimal one place to the right, so we'll end up with 0 0.016. Part E, 10 to the 15th times 10. Well, we did have 15 of the 10s, now we are multiplying it by a sixteenth ten, so that's going to be ten to the sixteenth. Okay, part F, um, eight times ten to the seventh times another ten. Well, we did have seven of the tens. We just multiplied by a, an eighth ten, so now we have eight times ten to the eighth. Part G. Uh, 0 0.3 times 10 to the 11th, and we're going to multiply that by another 10. Now we could choose to do this uh, one of two ways. We can say, okay, I'm going to multiply the 10 by the 0.3. When I do that, I move the decimal over one place. So I'm going to use up this 10 to move that decimal over. So what I'm going to have is 3 times 10 to the 11th. Or I could say that I have 0 0.3 times 10 to the 11th times 10. And what I did, I was multiplying 0.3 by 11 tens. Now I just added a 12, now I'm multiplying by a 12th 10. So it's 0 0.3 times 10 to the 12th. So these two numbers are equivalent. This first one is in scientific notation. The second one is not in scientific notation because it doesn't start with a non-zero number. You have to have a non-zero number in front of that decimal. Okay, which one was this? Number six. Okay, so that's all of number six. So let's get a new page. Okay, so number seven. Write the number that is one-tenth as large as each of the following. Okay, part A, we have 750 times one-tenth. That means we're going to move, when we multiply by one-tenth, that's the same as dividing by 10. That's the same as moving the decimal one place to the left. 
So if we move the decimal one place to the left, we will have se whoops, 75, not 7.5, but 75, because we moved it from right here over to right there. Part B, we have 2.8 times 1 tenth. When we multiply by 1 tenth, that is moving the decimal one place to the left, so that is 0 0.28. Okay, part C, we have 0 0.001 times 1 tenth. Again, that moves the decimal one place to the left. Instead of two zeros in front of the one, now we will have three. One, two, three, and then a one. Okay, part D, we have 10 to the sixth times 1 tenth. Okay, we did have, this is the same thing as having six tens up here, three, four, five, six. So we have six tens up here and we're dividing by a 10. So that's going to cross off one of the tens. And what we will have now is 10 to the fifth. So we did have six tens, but when we divided by another 10, that took away one of the tens that we had. So now we only have uh, five of the tens. And then part E, we have 41 times 10 to the ninth. And then we're going to multiply that by one tenth. We have two choices on this. We can multiply the 41 by one tenth, or we can multiply the 10 ninths by one tenth. I'm going to start, I'm going to do it both ways. The first way I'm going to do is dividing the 40, uh, multiplying the 41 by one tenth. So when I multiply the 41 by one tenth, I move the decimal place over. So I'm going to take this one tenth and I'm going to use it to move the decimal over to get 4.1 times 10 to the ninth. The other way I could do it is to take the 4.1 times 10 to the ninth times one tenth and use that one tenth to take off one of these uh, exponent, one of these tens in the exponent. That's my warning timer. So in that case, we would have 41 times 10 to the eighth. Okay, so I'm going to do just one more problem real quick, and then that will be the end of this part one video. Okay, so number eight, we have write each of the following numbers in decimal, for, in decimal form. For part A, we have two times 10 to the third. What we do is we start off with a two, we have to move the decimal over three places. One, two, three. One, two, three. Fill those in with zeros. And our answer is 2,000. Part B, we have one times 10 to the ninth. So we have a one, and we have to move our decimal over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine places. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Put in our commas. That is 1 times 10 to the ninth. Part C, 7.5 times 10 to the fourth. We're going to start with a 7.5. We're going to move the decimal over four places from where it is. Notice it's between the 7 and 5, not after the 5. So here is 1, 2, 3, 4. We're only filling in three zeros. So this is 75,000. We don't just add four zeros on to the end of this. We start off with the decimal between the seven and the five. Part D, 6.02 times 10 to the one. Well, we started off with 6.02. We're gonna multiply it by just 10 to the first power, which means we move our decimal only one place. So that becomes 60.2. Part E, 0 0.3 times 10 to the 12th times 10 to the 12th, it's 0 0.3. We're going to move this over 12 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you can fill all of that in with zeros. <laughs> um, and then uh, that's where I'm going to stop because the this is just about to time out on me.